Bay. Bay swings and misses on a high fastball. And that's it. Blue Jays win by a single tally today, and they take the series. Five to four in Toronto, the final. Trying to find out how, like, a barge horn connotes Blue Jay. A little obnoxious. Maybe a goal horn they're kind of going for, Canada. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It annoyed the hell out of me all weekend, and it annoyed me even more that the Pirates lost two out of three to the Blue Jays. I think the Blue Jays are an okay baseball team, but the Pirates had an opportunity to actually win two of those games. Neil Walker now joins us to discuss. Good morning, Neil. How are you doing today, pal? Morning, guys. How's it going? Always on a golf course, Neil? You just live out there? Is that what's going yeah. on? No, not not today. Not today. We got, we got back uh, a little later last night, just uh, unpacking the bags and settling into the last week of school for the kids. Oh, Let very good. Around a little bit. I'm guessing Neil didn't have trouble getting the kids to school the way Mark Caboli did. No. Neil, a little bit, uh, he, he's able <laughs> he's to wrangle the kids. Yes. Yeah, a little bit easier sure. than Mark is. All right, Neil, where do you want to where do you want to start? Because we do want to look ahead to this series against the Dodgers because some of these pitching matchups and matchups in general are outstanding. But, man, that was a frustrating series in Toronto, wasn't it? Yeah. I really feel like the Buccos could have won at least one of the two games they lost, and obviously they didn't. Yeah, I mean, I think a few opportunities throughout all three games were pretty glaring. I mean, yesterday we sent – five guys at the plate in the first, six guys at the plate in the second, and six guys at the plate in the third, and only came away with one run. And then game one, it felt like, obviously, and it, it, what it ended up being, but it felt like that game, two runs uh, before nine innings was going to be enough just with the, the uh, how Bailey Falter threw the ball and how Jose Barrios threw the ball. So uh, once that game turned, once, once Holderman and Bednar and Chapman had successful innings going into extras, uh, you were just hoping that there was a way that the Pirates could score more than one run in extra innings. That didn't happen, and that just you know you go for you go you go ten plus innings in a game and 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 and, and lose, especially on the road in game one of a series. It stings a little bit more and it puts a little added emphasis and pressure kind of on the next two games. And uh, they did they did a nice job in game two of just wearing down Yusei Kikuchi and and uh, you know putting their foot in the throttle and not giving them any breathing room. And then yesterday. Just missed opportunities all across the board, even though, um, you know, the pitching for the most part, you know, Quinn Priester probably uh, threw well enough to keep us in the game. It, it, it would have been interesting to see if he was he would have been able to get out of that fifth inning. Um, but nonetheless, uh, Vogelbach just tore us up all weekend. Yeah, I didn't have that on the bingo card, but <laughs> but now we turn the page. We get the day off today, and then we, we got some big boy baseball this week here in town, and it's starting to uh, winning series is is starting to get extremely important going into June. Yeah, now I heard you talking about the, the the Dodgers and how like their first three batters are just automatics and how the teams need to prepare for that. But I mean Shohei Otani, in in, in your opinion, will he go down as the best baseball player ever? Oh man, <laughs> I think I think barring any catastrophic injury. Um, I think there, I think there's a pretty decent chance of that. I mean, he overshadowed Mike Trout in that Angels lineup for for a couple years, uh, which, in in my opinion, Mike Trout was the best player that I had ever played against or seen in my time. And of course, that's uh, that's only starting from the early 2000s in professional baseball. But man, it, who else can you say outside of Babe Ruth that has is doing and will potentially do what this guy's capable of doing. I mean, he's, he's basically leading the league in or a top five, top 10 in almost every single offensive category. And when he was pitching before he got injured, he was basically top five, top 10 in most pitching categories too. So uh, the most valuable player award should almost uh, always be handed to him if he's pitching. Of course, this year he's not pitching. Neil Walker joining us here on the Fan Morning Show. You can tweet us, brought to you by South Hills Kia and Peters Township. Visit them at southhillskia.net. So Ben Sherrington was on yesterday on 93.7 The Fan for the Ben Sherrington Show, and he was asked about this team moving forward and if it can be a team that contends for the playoffs, and he talked about internal improvements. 
And I actually agree with him on all that. Would it benefit them to get a first baseman? Yeah. Would it benefit them to maybe get another bullpen arm? There are things they need, no question. But Brian Reynolds has an OPS of 741, the $100 million guy. Key Brian Hayes, he hit the big homer the other day. He's got an OPS of 653. O'Neill Cruz at 722. All those guys are better than what they've shown. So my question to you, Neil, if you could bank on one guy turning it around here, who are you seeing signs out of? of one of those three guys who might be the one to take that step forward first? Well, I, I think the track record is probably uh, more leaning toward Brian Reynolds really getting hot here in June. I mean, he's uh, – I was looking at some numbers the other day, and, and he's – I think he's eighth in, in all of baseball since 2019 uh, in OPS in the month of June. Um, we know Andrew McCutcheon gets hot when the weather heats up too. I'd love to say O'Neill Cruz because of how much of an X factor he can be in this lineup, but we don't have that track record going into the, the, the middle months stacking up 150, 200 at bats yet on him in the major leagues. And Keybron Hayes, I, I think we have a, he, he got hot last year, you know, creeping into July, middle of July, right after the all-star break. But we just haven't seen the, we just haven't seen the power numbers, the slugging from him. Uh, but you're going to get the defense from, from, at least two of two of those three guys. I think O'Neill Cruz has, has, has quietly been much better of late uh, at shortstop. Uh, Brian Reynolds plays good, good defense. Key Brian Hayes plays uh, elite defense. So, but but I will agree with that sentiment. I mean, it, it, in, internally we got you know we got some guys. Nick Nick Gonzalez has been a real a real spark um, up until yesterday. The Pirates' offense have, after after getting ten hits in a game was seventeen and zero. So number one, that tells you that off, uh, from the pitching standpoint, they've done it. They've done a nice job, especially when they've scored runs. But you know, getting ten hits and scoring five plus runs has been an issue for them uh, since you know really the last month and a half. So if if two of those three guys that you just spoke of right the ship and and we get we get Reynolds back, that's where he's typically been, uh, and you get key Brian Hayes on a heater or you get O'Neill Cruz on a heater. No, I think we lost Neil. We were flirting with it. Did you lose me again? Oh, oh you're back. Neil, real quick yeah. be before we lose you again, buddy, because we did get 99% of that. Henry Davis, it sounds like has been called back up. Uh, Jason Mack, you're putting that among others. What, I don't know how much of what he's done in AAA, like you watched the tape of, but what was he struggling with? And if you have watched the tape, what do you think he's done to be the Henry Davis that we saw in the minors before? And we got glimpses of last year in the majors. Yeah, it's, it sounds like, it sounds like things just slowed down for him a little bit since going down to AAA. Um, you know, they challenged him to, to, to really hone in on his approach and be very specific with his approach. What is he trying to do? We saw him up here, uh, be very aggressive early in counts, but, not find many barrels to uh you know to the middle pull us out of the field it was a lot of way out in front kind of chasing and, and once that happens at the big league level and these pitchers smell blood in the water uh you're in big trouble so uh, kind of a reset for him um and it sounds like he it sounds like especially over the course of the last couple of weeks he's found his groove his his at bats have been a, a lot better He's uh, he's found some slugging. He's hit a few home runs. He has been at a, um, so all things are, are pointing the right direction. So we'll see how he gets used, just from a standpoint of uh, you know, are we going to see him at different spots uh, outside of catcher? Are we going to see him catch four or five days a week like Grandall's doing? We're we're not sure. Uh, I'm sure those questions will kind of be answered here in the first couple of days, but. If, if, if you could get a, a really good version of, of Henry Davis and, and even on the other side of that, uh, Jack Sawinski at some point, if you can get him right, those will both be big shots in the arm for the Pirates. Neil, we appreciate your time. As always, man, thanks a lot. Hey, you guys have a great week. Enjoy that Dodgers series, all right? You too, thanks, man. Thanks, Neil. Thank you, Neil. All right.